Hey, I'm Mike Backrell, and today we're going to take a look at extracting vocabulary from yet another bebop tune. This week we're going to take a look at Donnelly. Let's take a look. Donnelly has a lot of great lines in it. It's just the whole melody is full of lines that are worth dissecting and moving around all the different keys and positions. But I picked three in particular today, and I might do a, a part two on Donnelly in the future. But I picked three in particular today that I really liked and I think are worth talking about. So this first line is over an F7 chord. And so what's going on there is we're playing over F7. So we start this line, we go to from the third, A, down to the fifth, flat seven, E flat, F, the root. So the first four notes are just, uh, just the arpeggio. And then when we go up here, we go up, up a half step to the flat nine, which in this case uh, G flat or F sharp, up to the f up to the flat third or the sharp nine, which is A flat or G sharp, back down to the flat nine and down to the root and the flat seven. So that creates this line. Now this is a super typical bebop line. This comes all throughout in all kinds of shapes and forms all through uh, bebop vocabulary. <laughs> A lot of guys will take the third and move it down an octave. And you'll see that exact line show up later in the same melody. This is played over a dominant seven. So, and, it, and these notes come out of the diminished scale. You know, because we have arpeggio. But then we have flat nine, sharp nine. And then it resolves down to the third of whatever chord we're going to. In this case, we're going to a B flat seven. So we land on a D natural. If we were going to a B flat minor, we could do the same thing and just land on a D flat. And so this is something we want to take to and move to as many positions as we can. Now with this particular fingering with the third up an octave presents some issues on the guitar. It's not the most guitar friendly voicing. But I I view it if I can put the A up here and then come back down. It's not so bad. I can also do it here. So I'm playing the A on the 10th fret of the 2nd string, down to the 5th here, on the same fret, just 2 strings lower. And you could also do it like this, but it, it does require you to change positions. But that's just kind of part of the jazz guitar thing, is, you know, when, when we take all these lines that come from horns, they don't always lay on our instrument super well, so we have to kind of finagle them a little bit to make them work. Now here, here's a sample line I came up with to kind of illustrate the uses of this line. And so I put, I apply this to a 2-5 in the key of C. So we've got D minor 7, G7, C. Now over the G7 part, we're going to play this line. Exactly as is. Over the, over the, over the 2 part, I'm going to take that John Paisano line I analyzed maybe about a year ago and apply it to this situation. So <clears throat> to start, here's the line. time now the first part of this line we're going from D minor starting on the root and we're going just straight up to the fifth one two three four five and we're going to the flat seventh and then back down to the fifth half step and then we're enclosing the third of the G chord And then we're landing on the third here. If you want to go even another step further, we can combine it with the Jimmy Weibel idea. Since we land on the third of the C major seven, we do something like this. Now the second concept is, it's just a concept more than anything, but it's all through the playing of Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and all these bebop guys. This is a super essential concept. And it's the idea of taking your arpeggio from the third up to the ninth. And these guys do it all the time. So directly after that first line, 
we go to the B flat seven, we play that. And so what is that? We're going D, F, A flat, C. Well, D, F, A flat, C, if we take B flat, D, F, A flat, that's, a, that's our B flat seven arpeggio, dominant seven arpeggio. And then we go to the C, that's our nine. So we're just going from the third, skipping the root, and jumping up to the ninth. Now, these bebop guys do this all the time. And you'll see this just a second later over the A flat major seven chord. You know, over that part of the melody. So what's going on there? We've got C, E flat, G, B flat. That's our third, fifth, seventh, ninth. Just as this was, third, fifth, seventh, ninth. <clears throat> so this is a really common technique for these guys. And one of the ways to achieve this is if you take your diatonic arpeggios, you know, through a major scale. So if we go up a third from the root and play that diatonic arpeggio, we'll get the three to nine arpeggio. So in the key of E flat, we would get, okay, we have B flat seven, go up to third to D, draw third, and then play whatever D arpeggio is native to that key, we'll get the three, five, seven, nine of B flat seven. So in the case of that, we're at E flat, so D would be a D minor seven flat five. And that is our B flat nine arpeggio. So if we just play that arpeggio, we get our three to nine. So the same thing in this A flat situation. <clears throat> a flat, let's say that's the one, go up a third to C, it's a minor in this case. We play that C minor seven. That gives us A flat major nine. So this is something you really want to spend time with to get comfortable with it, to, to be able to visualize this. And you, and I don't want you thinking, okay, what's the third up? No, I want you to just eventually start seeing it as one thing, you know. And and I think just through practice and hearing it and applying it to your own vocabulary will make it more easily accessible to you. So, you know, C major 7, we get E minor 7. D minor 7, we get F major 7. And so forth. You know, so it takes some time to practice that and get used to those shapes and visualize them within whatever you're doing. So if I think of A flat major, I want to be able to see that C minor 7 as part of the A flat major 7. I don't want to see it as separate things. Because if I see it together, I think I'll actually use it. One more line for this lesson, and it's this. I love this line. This is this is played over a quick two five going to D flat. So we have E flat minor seven, A flat seven, going to D flat, and we don't actually reach a D flat in this line. The, the line ends before that, but what we have is and so what's going on there is okay over this E flat minor seven, I'm playing a G flat major seven which is just what we talked about, the three to nine arpeggio. So here's an immediate application of the concept we just talked about. So I jump up, so I, I write up from the third, fifth, flat seven, nine, and I slide down a half step. And that's the sharp five of the A flat seven chord. And then I jump down to the third, the C. And that's, what, that's all this is. It's just a three beat thing. One and two and three and four. It doesn't even finish the measure out. And I love this because I think we all have a habit of trying to play up to the next chord. So if I'm playing. You know, I always want to land on that chord right there. But you, the, the idea can finish before that. You know, and then you, then you could resolve it a second later. So. <clears throat> All that's going on is here is going up, you're going up to the three to nine arpeggio, going down a half step, and then going down a third. And that outlines our two five. And so I could take the other positions. So this, this would be over D minor seven, to G seven. So I'm going up uh, D minor nine, or so F major seven, and then jump down a half step to the sharp five of the G chord down to the third. I think experimenting with that in a bunch of different positions will be really beneficial to you. Because this, this is a really cool line, and it's not something complicated or hard. It's it's just a cool melodic concept, um, and it reinforces that 3 to 9 thing we were just talking about. I'll probably end up doing a part 2 on Donnelly in the future.
let me know if there's any any bebop tunes you want me to take a look at or any other kind of things you want me to take a look at let me know in the comments i'm always happy to take suggestions and to look at things like that so thanks for checking out the lesson keep practicing i'll see you next time